this is Mandy from Designs by Miss Mandy. Today I'm going to be showing you some basics of designing 3D cut files in Adobe Illustrator. So let's get started. I figured that the best way to show you how to do this is by going through the step-by-step -step process I would use to make a simple die cut box. So that's what we're going to do today. So follow along. I'm going to be making a two and a half inch cube style box with a lid. So the first thing that I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool and you can find this over in your toolbar or use shortcut M to grab it and then you can either make a square two and a half inch square by clicking and then inputting the size that you want for your um, width and height or you can always just um, hold shift as you make a square and then try to get it to 2.5 which can be a little more difficult sometimes but you can watch the numbers change you see in the lower right hand corner and there you go okay so I'm gonna try to get that in the center my artboard all right and as a side note I like to start all of my 3d designs out in outlines so I'm going to switch that so I can see the edges of my shape a little bit better maybe I'll make that a little bit thicker so you guys can see it and then uh, with your shape selected hold down the option and shift keys and then drag your square whoops, to the side Do the same thing on the other side and the same thing on the top, same thing on the bottom until you have a cross shape. So that's pretty simple. Now the next thing is, so these are going to, this is going to be the base of our, of our cube, our box, and then these are going to be the sides obviously. And so now what we need to do is make some glue tabs. So. We're going to start over here on our left side and um, copy uh, command C or you can go to edit and copy and then we're going to paste in front which you can use this or you can just hit command F. And then I'm going to take this and make it about and then flip it so this is going to keep it on the same edge as um, your previous square which is really nice and I'm just gonna get this tab to be about about a quarter of an inch you can do it however you want though it's, it's up to you your personal preference Then I'm gonna switch to my white arrow tool which you can find over here in your toolbar click on um, upper left hand corner and then just nudge it in about like 10 or 15 points and you can do that just with the arrow keys on your keyboard and then do the same thing with the other side cool all right so next we're just going to duplicate this shape by doing the same thing as um, previous we can you can either do copy and then paste in front or hold option and shift and select it and drag it over to this side and then with both of these selected I'm going to duplicate them as well I'm going to do copy and paste in front I usually do that even though the other method is sometimes easier just because it's kind of a force of habit and now we'll have glue tabs on uh, both of these sides that we'll be able to um, fold and then glue to the sides of our boxes. Okay, so now we have our box template, our bottom, our base. And what we're going to do is we're going to group these all together. Just drag and select, just like I did, um, all of your shapes and hit Command G. And that will group them together. Then come over to your toolbar again and you can grab your line segment tool. And I'm going to switch to gray. So what I'm going to be doing now is making score lines. And as a side note, if you're a silhouette user, this step probably won't work for you. Um, I don't have a silhouette machine myself. I use Cricut. But silhouette users have told me that score lines can't be set up outside of silhouettes program. 
and so um, that's one thing to note and then as a second thing to note um, only use your line segment tool to make score lines I know it's sometimes tempting in a spot like here where we could just set up um, a square really easily um, for whatever reason in Cricut's program design space it just sometimes just doesn't like it when we do it that way so we're just gonna make all of our score lines individually with our line segment tool and hopefully that'll make sense as I go throughout okay so I'm go just gonna be making score lines anywhere that we want to see a fold so anywhere that you would like to see a fold in your template we're gonna add a line So make sure you have them all in your tabs every once in a while. Sometimes I kind of forget about those score lines, but okay, we should have those all now. Okay, all right, and then when you're all done, we can switch this back to fill, and you can see your score lines in there. We can select everything but our outside shape and group our score lines together. And then uh, we'll come back to this later. There's one more step we need to do with this, but first we're gonna make the lid. So we're gonna make another um, square the same size as our base. So instead of 2.5 inches though, our lid needs to be just a little bit bigger. So maybe we'll go like 2.5 seven try to line that up the center and I'll make my lid a darker color I'm gonna switch to outlines again and then um, we're gonna be making our flaps much the same way as you did the base of your box just instead of being the exact same size um, we're going to make them like maybe th three quarters of an inch um, because we don't want or I don't want my lid to be to go all the way down to the bottom and what I'm doing now is just um, duplicating my shapes and then I'm just going to rotate them and this should keep everything so that it's touching the exact edge of the top of my lid. All right, so once you have one on each side, you can add your glue tabs. Once again, I'm just going to copy and paste in front. Drag this up till it's about a quarter inch in height. Use my white arrow tool. just to um, nudge that in and make it tapered. And then add them onto all the sides that I need them on. There we go. So we have our lid shape. Now I'm going to group all of these together by hitting Command G and then I'm going to make score lines again so I'm going to do the same thing I did over here grab my line tool and then add score lines anywhere that I want a fold there you go easy peasy just gonna check to make sure they're all there looks good okay so I'm going to select everything except for my um, lid shape and group my score lines together by hitting command G all right time to finish up one of the last things we need to do is take our templates so our shapes right here and we need to merge them all together now because we don't want 
our cutting machine cutting out each and every one of those pieces we want those um, all to come out as one shape so with my group of boxes and tabs selected I'm going to go to my Pathfinder tool and if you don't have that over here you can go to window and then click on Pathfinder and I'm going to click on this first one here which is called unite and if everything went correctly you can check your layers panel this should all be a path now or a compound path it shouldn't have be a group if it's a group of objects then we need to go in and fix something something didn't meet up perfectly with um, the rest of your shapes do the same thing with your lid take all of your uh, your lid template go to Pathfinder hit unite let's check over here it looks like that grouped or that um, went well let's just just so I can show you what might happen if this were say just a little bit off from the rest of your shapes and you went to Pathfinder and hit unite you would see it didn't make it a, um, a path it made it a group and you, there's still two shapes meaning it's gonna cut this out separately which is not what we want okay um, you're not going to do the same thing with your score lines. Um, we want those to stay separated. We're not going to merge them together. We're just going to leave them as separate, but keep them in a group. And then the last, well, almost last thing, <laughs> select both the score lines and the shape that you want to go together and hit group, command G. Do the same thing uh, with your box base and there you go now we just need to get rid of all of our extra stuff if you have extra stuff which I do I've got a whole other couple of layers going on I'm gonna get rid of those and then I am just going to drag my lid shape over here and then using my artboard tool you can select it in your toolbar in your toolbar excuse me or hit command O or sorry shift O I'm going to grab my artboard and just drag it so it contains both of these and get rid of this one. The reason I didn't do this in the first place is I like to start out designing all of my um, templates to fit an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper or 12 by 12 inch depending on what I have on hand and what I'm making this out of. So I just wanted to make sure that the box would fit on an 11 and a half or 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Hopefully that makes sense. But now um, I can keep it together on one artboard because um, Cricut doesn't play nice and SVG cut files don't play nice when I try to export more than one artboard. So now we can just save our file. And then let's check it out in Cricut Design Space. All right, so I'm in Cricut Design Space, and I'm going to upload my file. As you can see, I already have it in here. Normally, you would just go to Upload and put it in. And then it's going to make everything group together. We don't want that right now. We're going to click Ungroup. We just want these two groups. We want um, our box template and our lid template, and we want those two things grouped together. But before we send it, we have to change all of our lines over here, our score lines, into just that, score lines. Otherwise, Cricut's going to use them as, see them as cut lines. So with all the lines on your lid selected, you can go over to line type. Cricut kind of changed the look of this a little bit, but you just go over to line type and you change it to score. Then, you can't forget this part. This part's important. you got to select both of them together and even though they're in a group it won't attach them unless you hit attach now it'll come out correctly and then we just need to do the same thing with the base of our box select all of the lines that we want to be score lines and change them from cut to score select both of our our shape and our lines and hit attach and you're good to go. You're all ready to cut. So there you have it. From here on out, uh, the process is the same as you would with any other project in Cricut Design Space. You just send it to your machine and go from there. 
So now you know a few basic tools you can use in Adobe Illustrator in order to create 3D cut file templates. Um, if you have any suggestions for future video topics or want to learn more about creating 3D cut files or some other tools that are available to you, be sure to let me know.